Hello everyone, it's Royal Fennis here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing the How to Play series on the Skoda T50, the tier 9 Czechoslovakian auto-loading medium tank where I will show you the three consecutive live games in this vehicle today to kind of explain my thought process, show you how the tank performs, and of course give you some general tips and tricks on how to play it as well. But before those games, let me first explain what this vehicle is all about. Now, Skoda T50. If you've ever played a tier 10 or tier 9 bad chat, you will get the hang of this tank almost immediately. It has the clip and dip auto loading opportunistic playstyle that I've always talked about, and that is where you just find enemy targets that are exposed, they're isolated, they're overextended, you clip them, and then you dip out of there, or you find, you pull back behind cover, or you let your teammates take the shot, and then you clip the enemy team. Very simplistic playstyle, and the reason this tank does it so well is because it has great characteristics. So. In terms of mobility, a 60 km an hour top speed. That keeps up with a lot of tier 9 light tanks, let alone the medium tanks. Very fast, very nimble, 8 degrees of gun depression, which means you're decently flexible in hilly terrain, uh, but your armor is pretty lackluster overall. You're a gigantic profile. I mean, compare this to a standard B. The tank is positively bloated in comparison, and of course you have very limited armor. Really the only spot you can reliably bounce is this itty bitty little gun melee, which is not going to bounce much too often. Now one nice aspect of this vehicle, I don't know why Wargaming decided to bless it, but they gave it spaced armor along the sides, which means, uh, yeah, people can't pen high explosive along this side panel here. Even if it's a 183, if you drive out sideways to it, chances are he's not going to pen that Hess shell. Very nice, it is the only tank in this entire tech tree to actually get that feature, but it definitely makes it more comfortable as a tier 9. Now, everything I've mentioned about the tank is pretty decent, maybe except for the armor, but what really makes this tank click is the gun. You get a 100mm autoloader with 3 shells in the magazine with a 2.5 intra-clip reload. That means you're dumping 960 alpha damage in about 5 seconds. It is a very good clipper. It's much better than the tier 9 batchat gun. Uh, I would say it's much better than the T-54E1's gun because that gun doesn't even get high explosive. It also has very decent penetration numbers. I'll bring up the equipment so you get an idea. Uh, in terms of penetration, you have 254 in your base AP, which is okay, but 319 on the heat. That is very solid. You're going to get through a lot of heavy tanks. So, Combine that with decent pen, decent clip potential, and decent accuracy, and you have one of the best clipping guns at the tier 9 level, especially for the medium tanks. So this tank is very solid. It's easily able to compete with the standard B, the Batch, in my opinion, all of these other like-tiered like vehicles. And as long as you are patient in this vehicle, and you understand the whole kind of concept of clip and dip, you will perform really well in it. Right now, uh, for about 120 games or so, I have 80, about 78% win rate and 3.5% average damage so a solid performing vehicle in tier 9 or tier 8 games it doesn't really matter as long as you patient you're going to at least deal decent damage in this tank and probably win a lot of games as well so with that all out of the way let's jump right on into those three consecutive live games all right and so here we are first game we are on oasis palms this is my favorite map in the game and looking at the lineup it is only one medium on my team now unfortunately uh the enemy team do outnumber us in tier 10 meds. I mean, they have a Leopard and Progetto, and I'm just out here in a Skoda T50. I have absolutely no chance of winning that engagement. Now, judging by how our team's playing, we're going to be going towards the A side here, and I want to work with my team around the A cap. Uh, hopefully, we can pick up some kills here, because if their team gets the nice flanky flank, well, they're going to rip us apart very quickly. So, I'm just going to try and go towards A, and I'm actually going to cruise along the top of this dune. Now, we see a tree fell down, so they are sending someone through town. There's also an E75, and there's the IS-7. So, now we have an idea of at least where some of their teammates have gone. And I'm just going to hang hang tight here. Now we know now we can see that one of the medium tanks is probably already capping C. There is the ISA in the back there. We actually might be able to get some shots into him momentarily. We're gonna put a track shot in towards this IS8 here. He is aiming at me. We're gonna pull back, and there we go. We get another shot into him, and we manage to get a full clip into the ISA. And that's exactly what you want in a Skoda T50 is to just get those trades out on the tanks that overextend or not paying attention and then pull back into safety find a new angle get those shots out and that's what I'm going to try and do pretty much for the entirety of this battle I mean there's really nothing else for me to do right now especially well hello I say especially since my team's 
positioning right now is all kind of stuck towards A, so I'm going to at least farm up this side while I can. R183 is going to go down pretty quickly there. Nothing I can do about it. Uh, the Fosh, the Leopard, probably the Progetto supporting the back. Really, there's not much I can do about that unless the 183 manages to bait them in towards us. That That is actually a possibility. Yeah, okay, the 183 is making the right plays, pulling them in, so we're going to pre-aim here and going to wait for this Leopard to overextend. So the Leopard has overextended. We're going to take his tracks out with one shot. We're going to take his tracks out with a second shell, and we're going to take his tracks out for a third shell. The Leopard just lost all of his hit points. Now, very important, you'll notice what I did there is I used this bush as full cover. The Leopard can't spot me. If this bush isn't completely translucent, it's full coverage there. The Leopard could not actually spot me there, and I also aimed, very important, I also aimed for track shots, and by aiming for those track shots, I was able to guarantee that Leopard lost almost all of his hit points there in a few seconds. Now, I can certainly be a little bit more aggressive here. Looks like the Progetto is yellowing in. I'm going to put one shot into the Progetto. I'm going to put bad shot towards the Progetto, and the Progetto is not going to survive that very long, I think. Yeah, the E100 should be able to take care of him. Looks like the 183 has just fired his gun, so I'm going to leave the E100 to take this fight and try and help our team kill this E75 and 183. They are pretty isolated, and they are the last two kind of healthy tanks on the enemy team, and not going to lie, I want some of those hit points. So we're going to start clipping out this E75, put one shot, two shots, and we might even be able to pick up the kill there. Excellent. 3.7k damage dealt. And we're continuing to progress forward. So, yeah, a solid game for the good old Skoda T50. I think definitely a good example of just sticking with your team and waiting till you get those opportunities to really maximize your damage. That is what this tank is all about. And we will be breaking about 5,000 damage easily this game. So we're going to put another shot to his 183. Going to even give him a little ram, get that extra damage. Um, well, not quite 5k, but still a pretty decent amount of damage in the end. So we're going to just keep ramming this 183, I guess. We're keeping his tracks off. Good work, FV. You know exactly what's up. And that's a solid first game. So, um, Proje uh, sorry, not Progetto, ha, huh. Skoda T50, what did I do here? I was passive, my whole team went A, I wasn't gonna wander off into the dunes all by myself, that would be a really bad idea, right? Even with those TDs, a Leopard and a Progetto would just rip me apart so easily, not worth it. Instead, I went with my team towards A, and I just waited for the enemy team to overextend, or poke out in the open, and all of those things, and then you just clip them out. And we were easily able to get 4,700 damage that game, so almost 5k. Solid result for a tier 10 game, especially an A fight, which is not always ideal for a tank like this. Although it's kind of nice because you can just chill behind the buildings or dunes, wait for the enemy team to poke out. So it worked out really well. So just go to T50. It's just a patient, patient bat chat, I guess. You know, you don't have all of that mobility of a bat chat, but you have that really good clip and that 2.5 inner clip, I was able to perma track that leopard in the open and that leopard lost so many hit points oh so very quickly. So first game out of the bag and now we are waiting to jump into a queue for the second game. Unfortunately, I am recording this in the evening, so these queue times are rather long. I mean, 40 seconds long, but we did get into a game. Awesome. Okay, so now we are on False Creek for the second game. It is a tier 9 matchup. Hooray, hurrah. We are top tier, which is great. That means I can probably clip out a lot of these tanks pretty easily. And uh, looking at the enemy's lineup, they have, well, a Defender Mark 1, which is completely broken, but at least it's a tier 8. Uh, they also have a T69 and TVP VTU. That's it for the mediums. Everything else is pretty much uh, pretty lightly armored heavy tanks and a 704. So, you know what? I would not be surprised if the enemy team sent most of their tanks this way. Either way, I'm still going to go here and try and clip out anyone who is crossing early on, right? So anyone who tries to go to the corner, get one or two shots into them, right? So if that defender, maybe the TVP, we're just going to wait it out for now. Now we can keep an eye on the mini-map. We can see someone has been spotted up on the left-hand side. TVP's already been spotted up on the inside of A, and that's good because I'm going to clip them out. He's going to be stuck in the open for a moment. He's going to give me one track shot. We're going to load up the high explosive here. And oh no, that was a really bad HE shell. No! Ah, oh, what a bad use of my clip there. I thought the HE would still pen him. Unfortunate, but we still managed to get two shells into him for, well, two and a half shells. And I don't, I think the T69 went down low. Okay, the enemy team didn't come this way. That's great. My team's already progressing forward. They've already noticed that. And uh, I will happily progress forward with my teammates here to start picking up kills on these pretty exposed tanks. Now, the Chimera is trying to sidescape here. I think we just pull out and we just kill this TVP. He is pretty isolated, so I'm going to pick up a quick kill on his tank there. Excellent. And the Defender is pretty isolated as well. Now, we want to watch out for that to AMX 5120. And you know what? Uh... 
I can help kill this defender, I guess. Yeah, where's the 704? The 704 doesn't have shots on me. My primary worry this game was where that 704 was, but you can see the 704 is kind of out of the fight. So I'm going to pull behind this poor defender here, and we're going to try and clip his tank out. So we're going to take his tracks off with one shell. We're going to aim for another track shot just to keep him in place and easily able to pick up the kill there. And that's where that clip is just so nice on this vehicle. Now, my team is very easily winning this game. I don't think we're going to lose this. And I, heck, I would be happy to even break 3,000 damage this battle. Now, looks like the TI2 is chasing around this T69. Poor little fellow. We're going to put a couple of shots into him. And yes, I am taking some shells here. I'm not too worried about that. We're going to put one shot in. I'm going to pick up a kill on this tank here. And it's just a T34 up top, which we will also put a shell into. And now is here. here's where I kind of have to YOLO to get any damage. As this T34 is a goner. He's out of the fight. That dude's already dead. The 704 and the 110 is the remaining hit points. And if I want to do the 3.5k or so average, I want to maintain in this tank we're gonna have to be really aggressive just to get off that last clip so the 110 looks like a very juicy target here we should be able to get a pretty good and easy clip into his tank. We're going to take his tracks off here. Nice little max roll. We're going to put another shot into his tracks here. And we're going to, well, I don't think I needed to ram him, actually. Did manage to pick up the kill on him. 70, T34 shot at us. And that is game over. So, tier 8, you can see the Skoda can be an absolute bully when it's top tier. I mean, it really does rip apart those lower, uh, lower tier targets very easily with that clip. Because a 960 clip is very big, especially when you have, like, a 17 second reload. So, solid game. Another solid game. Just under 4,000 damage, so I am happy with that result. Let's jump into a third one. I don't think there's really much to be said about that battle other than, I mean, it's your quintessential Skoda stuff. You're patient at the start, you wait for the enemy team to make up the mistake, uh, you clip them out, and then you find the weak target and you clip them out. It's very much a simplistic playstyle. And if you've ever played the Bat Chat, like I've already said, um, you should be able to catch on to these things very quickly. So here is for the third and final consecutive battle. We are here on Normandy, and um, Normandy is an interesting map. Now, the enemy team, in terms of haul down tanks, they have an M103, I guess in a mill, although I can overmatch them to turret very easily, uh, any 100. They also have a couple of tier 10 tank destroyers and some tier nine light and meds. So, hmm, where's my team going? That's the first part. Looks like we have a KPF Z70 coming this way. TI2 spawn sniping, some TDs and heavies going up top. I will need to keep an eye out on where my teammates are going, especially as they're going up top. Now we're gonna track this leopard in the open. Oh my God, that's a TI2, I don't wanna take that shot. Nice, and we do manage to avoid the shell from the TI2. Only get two out of three shells there. That's a little bit of an unfortunate trade for me. And it looks like the TI2 is backing up. I need to watch out for those tank destroyers. Uh, and most importantly, those tank destroyers. Okay, there's the Emil. Usually there's TDs just kind of chilling in the back. And I don't want to over poke this if there's potentially a TD. There's almost always someone on that red line. And I'm really nervous about poking that. Also, we're going to be flanked from A. But it looks like we have teammates going A. So maybe that's not such a big issue. There's that 183. I was most curious about where that 183 would be. And there's the T92. Now, T92's in the open. I think we might be able to start clipping out his tank very soon. So we're going to put one shot into the T92. I don't know if he's going to pull all the way back. Looks like he has done so. I don't think we're going to get more shots on him, do you? I don't think so. We might actually. Both TDs have been spotted out of this fight. So there's the T92. We're going to put one shot into his turret there. He gets taken out. And um, if you'll notice, both tank destroyers got spotted up up top. These three dudes down here are completely unsupported. So, yeah, here's where we go ham, and we just clip them out. I think I'm just going to drive above these dudes, and we're going to go for the lower HP heavy tank first, so that means the M103. We're going to put one shot into him. We're going to put uh, two shots into him, and we might take a shell in return. I'm not too worried about that. We put a third shell into him. Excellent. We're farming up damage pretty quickly here, and hopefully our E4 will help clean up that side. As for me, I'm going to start worrying about this Leopard and, of course, this Emil too. Now, the Leopard, hmm. He's kind of progressing on towards us pretty aggressively here, so I'm going to wait for him to overextend up top here, as I'm sure he will in a moment. Hello, dude. We pick up a kill on him, and there's also an Emil, too, that's going to be above, below us. I think he's going to turn back for the E4. Okay. Um... I, I take back that statement. He is not turning back for the E4. We hit him with a double track shot, though, taking out his tank, and, um... Hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to be doing 3.5k this game. The enemy team just does not have enough hit points left, and they also have a lot. Oh, actually, you know what? That 183 is all the hit points I need this battle. So we're going to try and put one shot into him. Not quite able to hit it there, unfortunately. Maybe hit a second shot into him. E4 or E100 hits us, unfortunately. And maybe we could put a heat shell through this E100. Heh, <laughs> that didn't even hit close. Okay, well, a bit of a mistake on my parking shot by the E100. Thankfully, the 268 is still pretty healthy. And I know, these were all pretty, pretty straightforward games. I think probably... Um, 
a little bit lucky on the matchmaking. No, no one here in, on the enemy team was very particularly difficult to play against, but that is kind of the issue with like, that is like the whole thing about random matchmaking is you never know what type of teams you're going to get, right? So you may get great teams one time, you may get bad teams one day. It really just depends. And we're going to start progressing down further now. Looks like the 268 is getting himself ripped apart by my team. Managed to pick up that final kill. And um, there we go. Skoda T50. It's a solid, solid, solid support tank. Is it like the best tank in tier 9? No, I don't think it is. Uh, is it like the, one of the better tanks in tier 9? I would 100% believe it is. It is a solid vehicle. You can deal damage very easily in this tank. You just have to have that patient mindset. Wait for the enemy team to overexpose. Just try and find those targets that are making the boo-boo and then slap them in the face for it. And that is how this tank works. So thank you so much everyone for watching today's How to Play in the Skoda 250. I hope you're able to learn a thing or two about this vehicle, how to utilize it, or even how to play against it. And um, I'm going to say that's going to be it for me tonight so you guys are awesome thank you so much please feel free to like the video and subscribe and i hope you all have a wonderful day and so now i have a dedicated cam for this girl here so whenever she decides to come in and i don't know photobomb my videos or whatever she likes doing all the time uh, i can capture it in something that's bigger than a little itty bitty box so Hello Bobby, say hello to the video. Uh, we have just finished recording for the Skoda T50 and I'm now about to edit this and then we'll publish it. So I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for enjoying the video and of course, hashtag Bobby Gang to all of those who stick around towards the end of the video.